If you watched my last video on creatine and brain function, you'll have seen that in people in certain mentally fatiguing situations, creatine supplementation has been shown in some of those studies to reduce the effects of mental fatigue brought on by those conditions. And it kind of makes sense. We know that creatine exists in the brain and it's important for our brain function. And we also know that by supplementing with creatine, we can, to a small but significant degree, increase our brain's creatine stores. And that line of thinking led scientists to look at creatine as it relates to mood disorders like anxiety and depression. For example, this group group of researchers measured the creatine concentration in the prefrontal cortex of the brain of 84 young men and women in their 20s with no clinical diagnosis of depression. They then had them complete questionnaires about their mood, around their depression, anxiety, and stress levels, and they found that the amount of creatine in the prefrontal cortex of the brain was negatively correlated with depression scores. I'll put the graph from the study on the screen now, but essentially they showed that as creatine levels in the brain decreased, this correlated with an increase in depression scores. It's worth noting though that this same study found no relationship Relationship with anxiety and stress. So we have proof that there may be a relationship there. So again, scientists hypothesize that by supplementing with creatine, therefore increasing our brain's creatine content, it may in theory help to alleviate some of these symptoms of depression and other mood disorders. And again, quick rewind to the last video, we already know that supplementing with creatine does have an effect on our brain creatine content. For example, this study had nine individuals take 20 grams of creatine every day for four weeks, and their total brain creatine content increased by 8.7%, which isn't huge, but it's certainly significant. But do we have any evidence of creatine supplementation actually improving symptoms of anxiety and depression? Well, this one study took women in their 40s who already had a diagnosis of clinical depression and prescribed them an antidepressant tablet. On top of this, they split people into two groups and gave one group five grams of creatine every day in the form of tablets, and the other group got the same amount of tablets but as a placebo. So they're both taking antidepressants, but one group is having creatine as well, and the other group is having placebo. When they compared the two groups, the group that took creatine showed greater improvement movements in depression scores, and this happened after just two weeks. And they continued to follow them throughout the eight weeks, and this difference was maintained by the end of the study. However, it's not all positive. There have been some studies where creatine failed to boost the effects of antidepressants, though it's worth noting these studies tend to have used lower doses or not necessarily a long enough study period. From some of the research we've covered in this video and the last, it seems as though it's harder to increase our brain creatine content, and to stand any chance of doing so, the dosing and the timing needs to be adequate. And finally, I've really struggled to find any research where they've tried creatine supplementation for people with more mild anxiety and depression, or people not taking antidepressants. So we don't really have any evidence that taking creatine alone is going to have any major effect on your daily stress levels or anxiety levels. But again, there is some evidence that when we take enough creatine for long enough, it may have some synergistic effects when taken with antidepressants. But that's not a recommendation from me, that's just what we've read in the research. And obviously, if you're thinking about taking anything, do consult your doctor first. So where do we stand with creatine and our mood? Well, to be honest, it's a growing area, so it's exciting exciting to know that new research is being produced, but we need more clinical trials in a wider range of people to really have a look at the effects. Thanks for watching everyone, as always if you like this sort of content hit subscribe and I'll see you in another video.